Parental discretion is advised. Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. Enjoying this wonderful pizza from Slice on Broadway. The people in Pittsburgh that provide good pizza. The podcasters. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. Hey guys, it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show 469. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitters here in Pittsburgh, PA in the Mayhem Studios. Ready to get crazy talking about the professionalized uh, sport of entertainment wrestling and uh with me uh as usual is the man from uh uh the land where we make way too many podcasts it's uh papa lunchbox of uh panelriot.com at dj lunchbox on the twitter how you doing i'm doing good sorg this is my third podcast of the evening i've eaten seven pounds of blood sausage and i am fucking ready to go that's a good way for prepare preparedness. Also coming at us from Poo, <laughs> Kipsy, New York, it's Mad Mike. Hey, Sorg, it is my second podcast of the night, and I just had a lot of pizza because you inspired me with what you were bringing to the table in your video stream, so I got some pizza from up here. Oh, yeah. Also back with us is that man. He's the uh, That's the sound guy for the Renegade Wrestling Alliance, rwalive.com. It's Wheels. Hey, what's up, everybody? Man, I feel kind of bad. It's a Tuesday, it's podcast, and all I did was bake chicken. So, well, hey, that's all right. I still feel welcomed. Got the chicken. And with us in studio, a very special guest. Uh, He's joined us before on the Indie Mayhem Show. Uh, first time on the Wrestling Mayhem Show, we have a very special getting to know the Hooven on uh, WMS Gold this week. If you're a Patreon supporter at the dollar and up level, he is Daniel Hooven, the photographer down there with a international wrestling cartel. You can see a lot of his work over at IWCWrestling.com. This is the part where you say hi. Oh, hey, how's it going, everybody? <laughs> <laughs> some some people only listen to audio. Oh. Yes, yes, yes. How you Dude, doing? I'm good. Excited to be here at the Sorgatron studio. Just a real quick, so people, maybe people haven't caught you on the uh, Indie Mayhem show uh, chatting with us about I- indie wrestling. Uh, tell us, uh, uh, you know, what are you doing with IWC and, and, and helping out there? Um, I've been doing the, the ringside photography for actually a little bit over a year. I want to say almost a year and a half now. Um, and uh, just contributing that way and anything else I can do with Plumber. I get to work a lot uh, behind the scenes with the, the Steel City Saint, the Alpha Male, Justin Plumber, with uh, Michael Sorg and Jesse the Mark who I think is close to filing a sexual harassment claim on me after the last show. <laughs> Jesse. <laughs> but um, no, I, that's what I've been doing. <laughs> I've been just doing a lot of the photography, trying to help uh, capture the stories and whatever I can. It's a great time. It's a good organization. Awesome. Awesome. And and, 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 and we need to point out, you your origins are in Philadelphia. They are. I am from the uh, the east of the Mason-Dixon line in, 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 uh, in Pennsylvania, which I call Harrisburg. I'm from the east side, so I, I uh, grew up with wrestling, um, with ECW, and a lot of the indie feds that kind of took over after that. Um, ironically, I think Ring of Honor started out there. I never really got into them much, but uh, you know, ECW, CZW, so I've been a lifelong wrestling fan for forever. Awesome. Good to have you on and uh, uh, dropping your opinions here as we go through our discussions tonight on the Wrestling Mayhem Show. And you can do so, too. You can join us here, of course, live at live.sorgatron. No, live.wrestlingmayhemshow.com. I guess the other thing works, too. About 9 p.m. Eastern Time every Tuesday night. Uh, You can also please subscribe to us. All the links, audio and video formats for this and so many other shows that we're doing over at wrestlingmayhemshow.com. Of course, the raw wrap-up with the guys uh, last night. Thanks for picking up on that, Mike and company, uh, for doing that the mayhem minute we're doing four days a week and watch parties all kinds of crazy stuff great responses to the watch parties recently by the way you can also drop us a line let us know your thoughts of professionalized wrestling no we're not on that one yet 412-206-WMS0 or the email address did you used to not did you used to do the email first i used to i used to i've never recovered you never recover. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to trip you up. I've just never recovered. It's because it's on top on the title, so I do it first now. I didn't used to. You're right. You're not incorrect. 
I am now. I now I'm completely incorrect because <laughs> you're doing it the other way around. <laughs> but you can also oh hey big also big thanks to uh, Basic Sickness at basicsickness.com for the intro outro music. Please check out free music and videos from him over there. Another Pittsburgh original, and uh, and uh, Facebook uh, Mayhem Show on the Twitter is all kinds of fun stuff for you guys to interact with us. So let's get into it. Oh wait, first I almost forgot. Let's uh, thank our Patreon supporters over at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show you can go over there to get some exclusive stuff like the state of the mayhem i do once a month the wms gold you get it first we're starting to release some of it about a month afterwards but a lot of getting into the mayhemers and a lot of other stuff and that guy's not on the show right now um that's that guy's not on the show right now (laughs) I'm getting a message. He's not on the show right now. I forgot to tell him he's not on the show right now. <laughs> so, um, um, anyways. What the hell? <laughs> message is really working Google Hangout right now. <laughs> Sorry, Bobby. Um, but anyways, Bobby. Uh, thanks to our, our current Patreon supporters, um, um, Ciro from... <laughs> Zero from uh, WrestlingRevolution.com, uh, the WrestlingRevolution.com, and of course our friend Bo Diggity! Woo! Thank you for your continued support. You can go over there at patreoncom show and support the show. Become our boss as well, and trip me up in the chat room as well too. So uh, with that, let's get into our stories for the week. Uh, we're definitely going to be talking about payback uh, here in the second segment. For first, let's talk about Damian Sandow. Uh, the really interesting to see what's happening after his deal. Uh, LB, you brought up a tweet that he he uh, put out recently. I did. I did do that, Sorg. I sent it to you so we could talk about it on the show here today. And I'll read it in the voice of Sandow, so you are ready and everybody else is on the same page as well. Okay. Or are you asking if you can beg our indulgence for a moment? I will beg your indulgence for your tweet indulgence for the moment. And he says, uh, uh, Sandow says, to, and to my critics in and out of WWE, remember, I'm the guy that made being a stunt double work. Play the hand you're dealt. Go forward. And this is kind of in response to the last few weeks where he's really kind of been a really weird character. Like, they don't know. Like, you know, it seems like such a lull after being so loved as the stunt double for The Miz. Yeah. They made him the Macho Man. They made him the Macho Man. Yeah. Because nobody watches TNA and nobody there knows that this has been done before. Yeah. Uh, but to be fair, it worked before. That's true. It worked before. For like a I month. think it's working now. No, Jay Lethal was the Black Machismo for a long time. He was the Black Machismo for a long time, but people wanted him to be the Black Machismo for much less of that time. <laughs> I beg to differ on that. But anyways, so so again, he's somebody that's making that work. He's somebody that that, that turned from this I- imitation kind of idea into what he what he what he has become. I mean, we also got to think. I mean, mankind was a really goofy character when it began, right? It was it was from that age, and he turned it and molded it into something that people could really sink their teeth into, right? I, I don't know. I think Mankind started out very serious and then became very goofy. True. But even... Yeah, that, 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 yeah, it's more... It went the other way. It was like... Because he sat in that boiler room and did those creepy things, kind of like the Bray Wyatt-type deal in the beginning, and then he got silly and ran circles around the ring with a sock in his hand. and So, yeah, it... it he did the reverse of everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he had a rat named Charlie and then a sock named Sokka. So, well, LB, you brought up this tweet. What do you what do you think about this reaction from Sandow? I think it's great. I mean, he really he did make the uh, being a stunt double work. You know, the stuff with the Miz was really great. But I mean, even then, you had to look at it and wonder well, where they're going to go with this. Mm-hmm. And I, I hate to be I really do hate to be Debbie Downer about this, but where are they going to go? I mean. Is it realistic that we're going to see Sandow in the WWE title picture? I, I think the odds of that are, are very slim. Uh, stranger things have happened, and I hope that I'm completely wrong about that. I hope that, you know, uh, God forbid if there's a Daniel Bryan-shaped hole in the picture that maybe Damien Sandow can come up and, and fill it. But um, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm not confident. I mean, it's a, it's a good it's a good take on that to say, hey, you know, 
work with the the hand you're dealt and 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 become flexible and, and everything like that i mean uh, this is what they're looking for you know the whole brass ring argument with wwe right you know how mm-hmm. how what are you going to do with this and how did you handle that if they can handle that well maybe they'll handle this you know and and working that up and having a really weird situation like with the miz and just becoming like the most over thing on Monday nights to see him come out and do the double thing. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, Dan, do you have any thoughts on this? I think, I think, I mean, the, the big show did this um, many, right. many centuries ago in his prime where he was coming out as Hulk Hogan or Rowdy Piper, or I think a headbanger. I, I don't know. I mean, I don't, I think that, that to do this with somebody that's, that's just re- recently became uh, relevant in the WWE's eyes um, in Randy Savage, you know, he just went into the hall of fame. I, I think it's, you don't you don't pretend to be a dead wrestler to get over with the crowd, right? And I think what a lot of people kind of overlook is part of the reason I think you know Miz Dow was so successful was because he played off of the Miz, and the Miz is such a good heel that you know it was almost the Virgil and DiBiase gimmick over again, and uh, without the big <laughs> yeah, payoff. but nobody cheered for Virgil. <laughs> oh, oh, I beg to differ. Um, many people like the Virgil, but um, I don't know. I, I don't think it's a good thing. I don't, I don't think Santa's going to be back in the title picture. Um, now that there's only one title, I, I don't think he will be, unfortunately. I mean, I thought for a while him or Cody were going to get the SmackDown title. What was that the world championship, not the world title, whatever right, they call right, it. Right. But um, I, I think it, it's, it needs to run its course. And I, I, I for some reason, I think Axel Mania could – could have a much longer run than this macho man Dow, but it already it already has had a pretty several month run, <laughs> which is um, amazing. At least he's doing something, right? At least he's not trying to pretend is pr- pretend to be his own dad. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> I know how that applies, but I was started thinking about it differently <laughs> in a way that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> well, but, maybe that's why they put him with. Axel, because people were like, all right, these two guys are being goofy together. Let's see if it can work together as a tag team or whatever they can throw together and maybe see what's going to happen with the whole deal. I'm like, all right, we got the kind of mega powers type thing, but let's let them see where they go with it. I mean, we saw it with the Ascension coming out and then both beating up the guys, and I sat there and watched it and went, okay, so it's the Road Warriors versus Hogan <laughs> and Savage. Minus the steroids. There. Yeah, that's what I saw. I, I mean, as much yeah. as I like it, my only problem is that how can he not do a good Randy Savage imitation? <laughs> it was pretty bad. I, I mean... Sorg, you know, it's not that difficult to do a Macho Man Randy Savage imitation. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it's really, really not. Like, in the buildup for the Macho Man in the Hall of Fame, you had almost every person on the roster do a Macho Man impression. Reigns cut right. his best promo during that time. Exactly. <laughs> I'd argue it's still his best promo to date. <laughs> maybe, maybe we should be doing Roman, the Macho Man Roman Reigns or something like that. Like, you should, like, I couldn't think of a pun, but maybe Roman should have that gimmick instead of Sando. Those two people should be switched. But how do you not do a good Randy Savage impression if you're going to run this gimmick? So, some thoughts from the chat room here, because you know people have thoughts, especially some certain individuals. Eamon's in here saying he's not a critic of Damian Sandow's ability. He is critical of WWE's ability to capitalize off of true momentum, which I feel is evident from how they handled the growing popularity of Damian Mizdow. Uh, silly is fine. I just don't know how a person's popularity can go when it's just him playing an old character from the 80s. Hey, he was very popular in the 90s as well, guys. Um, but anyways... <laughs> Yeah. He's yeah. still popular now. <laughs> to be honest, yeah. Uh, Mainstream Matt says, let's just admit WWE really has no long-term creative planning for anyone below the very top of the card. That's why the Bellas and Kid and Cesaro switch sides without the slightest hint of storyline reason. I-, I believe that, too. I think it's just like, ah, well, let's uh, let's have them do something this week, right? You know, I, I think there's just, just a very reactive thing, and I don't know if it's because it's stretched so thin what it is but it's like uh oh, we got filled 10 minutes uh go out there uh, pretend to be a macho man you know well, i mean that that's what the stuntable gimmick was supposed to be too i heard his uh interview with jericho he said that was literally supposed to be a one-off act but it got so over mm-hmm. that they kept running with it i mean you never know what's going to stick sometimes you never know 
<laughs> wouldn't be how I run a wrestling company. Yeah, but you don't, and you're not a billionaire. So, <laughs> and besides, they're not. People aren't paying money to see Damian Sandow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They're not. <laughs> even when he was Damian Mizdow, they're not paying money to see that match. No, no, no. But it's a part of the whole package. They're like, oh, this is the part where this guy comes out. Yay! I'm, I'm here to see Dean Ambrose or Seth Rollins or or John Cena or whatever the case may be, uh, is who I'm paying to come see. But you're also there to see the rest of the show too. Typically, you know, uh, you know, oh, this is the part where this guy comes out. This is the part where Gold Dust comes out. You know, uh, I, I mean, I. I think that's such a wide thing because there's, there's, you know, a certain number that is kind of based on that main event guy or, or series of guys, but there's just like people are just the the WWE fan from the Hulu commercial that got the tattoo, the poor bastard, you know. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Who would ever get a wrestler tattooed on their body, Sork? I <laughs> Actually, there's somebody has a Seamus beard tattoo at the IWC show this past weekend that Missy pointed out. It's supposed to be pretty cool. But anyways, um, other than that, um, also, also Riz is pointing out that uh, now we're comparing him. Uh, he he doesn't do a good that, that he doesn't do a good Macho Man gimmick. Have you seen the impressions and gimmick that Axel is doing? Well, he can't do the voice, but he can cut a decent Hogan promo. He's having fun with it. I, I want to yeah. see why I lose. I would love to see the, the fake mega powers turn into and evolve into something else. And I think that's what it needs to do is like, let's give this time, you know, let's see what happens in a few weeks. Maybe this is something that gets, we get the mega powers, even if it is, I, one, they need Elizabeth. They're going to continue with this thing. Okay. So who's Elizabeth? <laughs> I was just thinking the oh, same yeah. I was just going to ask who would be your Elizabeth for the mega powers. I mean, you maybe something weird like Paige is the Elizabeth or something, right? Bailey. Bailey. Bring back Bailey. Maurice. Bring back yeah, Maurice. I was going to say Maurice. Maurice would be perfect for this. You know, how they can get, <laughs> you know how they can get the mega powers over immediately? Just have Hogan come out, rip shirts with them shake their hands and walk out and in 30 seconds they're a legitimate tag team or maybe it's just build up because you know hulk wow. hogan's going to show up in the next few uh probably within the next month to plug it with tough enough he already showed up and kind of lambasted axel though right before mania that's true that's true but they could turn it around you never know he could go come out and tear them both a new one these i i feel like i mean these guys, this this gimmick, this thing that they're doing, the difference between what they're doing and what Hulk Hogan and Macho Man were doing was that when Hulk and Macho Man did it, they were serious. That's just how they were. These guys are being a parody. That's the big difference. I think that's why they won't be taken seriously and they won't find their way above the Intercontinental title. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Or it just becomes like something where the, maybe they just reenact the entire storyline just across Raw to to sell the network over the next month. <laughs> oh no, that means they're going <laughs> to take their me I mean, You know what? It is getting a reaction though. Yep. It's getting a reaction. It's getting them all TV time. So, and, and, plus it, it, I, and it, they brought the ascension up for a reason. You have to do something. With yeah, it. And, and also, also, have you seen the Miz lately? He's filming a movie. Ooh. Is he filming? Okay. He's filming a movie of Paige. That's why she hasn't been on either. Oh, never mind. Then. That's that's why I think they had their blow off. That's why they hot shot uh, the blow off on that one. Yes. I can see that. Dan, you had something to say? And uh, Matt oh. nominates Steph to be their Miss Elizabeth, <laughs> which is all sorts of weird. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, that, no, that I, was good. Weird. I, I, I caught a little bit of Raw. Um, the first like hour and I watch. I don't think they got a good reaction. You know, I, I I don't. Unfortunately, as great as the ascension was in NXT, when you realize that that what, what's what, what's the, the Connor's the former rat gimmick. What's the other guy? What's his name? Victor. V- Victor's a smaller guy, right? I believe. Yeah, I believe Victor's a okay. smaller one. So, you know, you had the Ascension that had a great run in NXT until you realize Victor's the same size as X-Pac and, and they get jobbed out on Raw every week. I, I don't think the crowd had a good reaction. They were kind of like, this is kind of cool, but I don't see it gaining momentum. I, I could be completely wrong. I mean, as long I mean, it's, it's you know, they're getting paid. They're on TV, so good for them. I hope it works out. But I think Axel could have a much. I think Axel actually has more potential down the line than, than Sandow. Well, at least the Lucha Dragons are getting over. That's, uh, not, that's not a good thing. For it. You know how I feel about you know how I feel about feel about those two yahoos. <laughs> what do you? How do you feel about those you t- two yahoos? So I I don't like the Lucha Dragons. I don't like the the Lost Matadores. They they need to go away. Okay. Forever. 
Okay, well, it looks like the Matadors might be breaking up. They they were abusing their bull this week. Well, oh, and they, they, that's another problem. I'm, I'm just I'll, I'll stop in a second, but but wrestling, I I love wrestling. It, it's it's I think the, the most dis- one of the most un- misunderstood athletic ventures in the world. The the risk the the you it, it's a tremendous amount of athleticism to be to be a professional wrestler on any level. And then to take these men that work very hard and saddle them with a midget bull and tell them that's how I think that's disrespectful. Uh, there's no place in wrestling for midget bulls, for leprechauns, or for Mexicans that dress up like dragons and jump off of trampolines. I beg to differ. You have not watched Lucha Underground. That is the foundation of professional wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> I would argue that that's where it started. If you can't, if you can't believe they would beat you up in real life, they shouldn't be on TV. So you're more into the realism side, or at least perceived realism, bigger than life characters. No, I mean, to an extent, I mean, like CM Punk. You know, I love him. I think he's great. You know, some of the smaller guys that could run circles around. You know, speed versus power. Uh, I just feel like the WWE doesn't care about the undercard and you get characters that you can't get vested in. If I want to watch wrestling, I want to see storylines. I want to see, you know, people that I can escape all my problems and say, you know, these guys are fighting out their problems in a ring. And instead I have two guys wearing pink masks running around with a bull and, and WWE wants to be taken seriously by the mainstream. If you want to be taken seriously by the mainstream, get rid of that junk. Hmm. Now, and you have, you have kind of a perception on who you think is the more, Realistic. You're a Ryback fan, for instance. I am, because I think all of us can agree if we walked into a bar and we had to fight somebody that looked like one of the Matadors or looked like Ryback, who would we want to fight? Mm-hmm. Ryback. The bull. The bull, <laughs> exactly. That'd be some sort of hate crime, but the, the bull. I, I think you need a level of realism. Like, I don't think, you know, Rey Mysterio should ever beat up somebody like, like Batista. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, just the same way, the, the big show, as much as I don't like him, as a performer, it's not his fault. Just how he's booked. How can you? How can you job him out? A seven foot three, seven foot five hundred pound guy. Whether that's you know real or, or, or just story stats, how are you going to job him out to people that physically couldn't beat him? Mm-hmm. If they had taken the same attitude they took with the Great Khali that they did with the Big Show, the Big Show would be in a much better place, and people pinning him would mean a lot more. Okay. Yeah, but even at the end of his run, Great Khali was jobbing to everyone. Oh, he should be. Because somebody like him, I can oh, run. No. Somebody, Wait, now I'm confused. Somebody, somebody like Big Kali, you can run her under his legs, and he'd fall over trying to turn around. But you don't know that just looking at him. Oh, I he he can barely walk. I'm waiting for Riz's response in the chat room because he's going to go nuts after the great Kali comments. <laughs> <laughs> he just dot, dot, he's going to lose dot, his dot. mind. Oh yeah, he's just dotting, just dots out there. Just You're, dotting you might have a problem when Riz comes to Super Indie. There, uh, sorry, I keep botching this mic over here. It's okay. It's okay. Just love the mic. Just just be tender <laughs> to the mic. Um, well, uh, after, I don't know. You you guys have any response to that? Um, I mean, I, 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 you know, of course, some of you guys watching Lucha Underground, you know, a lot of those smaller guys kind of put in a different context, and I think it works a lot for them. Um, I, I, I agree with you on, on what you're saying the, uh, currently and before on Ryback that, you know, the 80s were definitely his time. But um, uh, haven't we kind of gone away from that a little bit with – New generation MMA. MMA MMA has really proved that you can't go by that anymore. Okay, that's true. Because you put you put someone like Brock Lesnar in MMA, he can be beaten by yeah. people smaller than him pretty quickly sometimes. So that's kind of restructured our believability in pro wrestling. You think? I think so. Okay, I, I think that that's true to an extent. Like gimmick wise, like CM Punk versus Lesnar. Could I buy CM Punk beating Lesnar? Absolutely. Because CM Punk is presented as as a you know a, a judo specialist as a fighter, but you take somebody from the Matadors or the Lucha Dragons, there's no way you should ever believe they could ever beat Brock Lesnar. It's 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 my big problem, I guess, is these childish gimmicks that sell merchandise. But as a grown man, it makes me cringe every time I watch it because I'm like, you know, for all the athleticism and all the great storylines, all the all the great athletic competition I see in professional wrestling. When somebody makes fun of it and then something like the Luchadors pop up on my screen, I can't really defend it. And it's kind of hard when you look at WWE, you're watching WWE Raw, you're in, you're watching because you want to see Brock Lesnar because you believe him, you know, and to believe he's going to punch somebody in the face at WrestleMania, which he did a lot. <laughs> um, but then right before them is a guy in a, a midget in a bowl. 
outfit. That's but how I feel. To be fair, I, no, there's there's place there's there's space for both of those in professional wrestling because okay. sort you said multiple times professional wrestling is about the spectacle. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's not just about you know uh, the the in ring product. It's about all the stuff that goes into it. It's it's the events. You know what I mean? So yeah, you've got the the main events and the very realistic fights, and there's space for your Brock Lesnar's, but there's also got to be space for the for you know your goofier stuff. And sometimes the joke lands, and sometimes it doesn't. But you know, people tune in for just that stuff sometimes. Mm-hmm. It is a spirit circus. And also, circus. we're not being asked to believe that the Matadors could beat Brock Lesnar. If they booked that match, no one under the sun would think that that the Matadors could beat Brock Lesnar. But that's why they're not at that main event level. They're not even being close to being booked at that main event level. Like that's why like a guy like Seth Rollins, if you look at him against Brock Lesnar, he may not be believable just based on appearances, but then when you see his character and how slimy he is, underhanded, mm-hmm. and how dirty he plays by the book, like how how much he breaks all the rules and everything, that's where the believability comes in, and that's where someone who, even like a, like a Rey Mysterio, could beat Brock Lesnar on a on a given day just because of how fast that he is and how much he can. Because Brock has never played as a very cerebral guy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, you know, I think it boils down to, and you know, I, and I, you know, it is a spectacle, it is a fun, but I, it is the points. I like the parts where wrestling tricks me into believing. As as uh, mainstream Matt is saying in the chat room, make me believe, right? Like that's where they kind of capture you. That's where I think like the events like what happened at WrestleMania works so well. Oh, that was awesome. Or him, you know, or, you know, Brock with uh, uh, John Cena getting bloody that first time, or with in some cases Triple H in some in that series of matches. Um, but uh, that idea, make me believe. Uh, let okay. Let's roll it back, and I know we're going to have a continued discussion with this. I think this is we'll, we'll clip this out, and this will probably be a pretty good one uh, for you guys over on the uh, Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook group. I'd like to hear your opinions on this. Uh, what do you think about the believability and you know up up you know up beside guys like the Lucha Dragons and and those kinds of interesting gimmicks? But uh, Dan Hooven, you know, like as we talked about, you're an old ECW fan, right? Oh yeah. Now I'm going to pull you. I actually don't know. Are you are you familiar with the Madhouse of Extreme at the Elks Lodge in Queens, New York? I, I am. I am. Is that part of the lore for you? I'm, I'm not sure if it would. No, be. no, I am not. I mean, I know they held shows there. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I've seen ECW shows in two locations: uh, the ECW Arena down in Oregon Avenue in Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's where I went. I've only been to about five of their shows there, and I went the one at the Hammerstein Ballroom, which was absolutely. Um, I love the Hammerstein Ballroom. That's actually where I saw my only Ring of Honor show too. Nice electric nice. atmosphere. My first, my first Ring of Honor show was at. Hammerstein Ballroom with Mad Mike, actually. Yeah, it was. So, I remember main event at the one I was at. Yeah, yeah. Some guy named Tyler Black versus Nigel, Nigel McGinnis, and they tore the it was, house uh, down. Some guy named Tyler Black, Nigel McGinnis. So, uh, we, had, we had some guy named Nigel against some guy named Brian. And they have Brian, Brian Danielson Brian something. and Claudio Castagnoli in a four way. It was uh, pretty crazy. I don't know if those guys are doing anything. I don't these know where days. they're at. No, <laughs> no idea. No idea. But we got a release coming up here. Uh, PittsburghWrestling.com. You can pick up the digital or the DVD over at Joe-Dabrowski.com. But uh, there's there's a, the Madhouse of Extreme, Elks Logs, Queen, New York. Uh, there's a lot of those names that will be very familiar to a Dan Hooven over there. Uh, and we and Joe Dabrowski uh, got his hands on, compiled this great collection with a lot of those names, with some uh, little scene ECW style action, we'll call it. And it's actually uh, commentated by Shane Douglas himself. Uh, does play by play and then a little bit of callbacks and uh, uh, memories from back in the day. So uh, it's, it's hardcore legacy. You can pick it up right now. PittsburghWrestling.com, $9.99 for the digital download, uh, including all kinds of great guys. Balls Mahoney, Tommy Dreamer. You're familiar with him right now, Daniel <laughs> Hooven, current IWC heavyweight champion. Sandman, Abdullah Butchers on this thing, Sabu, Bam Bam Bigelow, Chris Candido, so many more. Um, so 
So great stuff. Great stuff there. You can check that out. PittsburghWrestling.com. So much more, including, of course, uh, new releases. Just uh, I believe tomorrow we'll be releasing uh, the Road to Super Indie, The Dance, on digital download. Everything is in the render, waiting to go up there. So look for that. And please sign up for the newsletter. You'll get a free download of IWC's 100th show, including the likes of uh, Christopher Daniels, AJ Styles, and so much more. Some people are probably in WWE now, to be honest. So actually, I can conf- actually that's almost no. I, that's that's probably definitely the case. So mm-hmm. check it out. Support pro- indie wrestling. Support professional wrestling. Support this show, PittsburghWrestling.com, and upcoming in the na- the, the currently being redeveloped indie wrestling.us. We'll both get you there. So let's get to payback this weekend. Oh no, no, that's not what we're doing. LB, I forgot about your segment. Magazine. It's magazine time for we need a theme song. And I think this is the last one. Is it is it really the last one? I thought you had so much more. <laughs> no. No? No. No. These are we are, we're down to our final two predictions. All right. Two predictions. All right. Three predictions. Now, real our quick for those predictions. for first time listeners, what is this segment about? Oh, a little while ago, I went to a comic book convention and I bought a magazine called Sports Review Wrestling from 1988. And I bought it because on the cover, it said predictions through 1998. And I thought 1998 from 1988 to 1998 was a real juicy year, set of years for professional wrestling. Surely some they had to get something right. And thus far, they have been both... Uh, Creepily accurate and insanely wrong. Uh, we have had um, uh, accurate predictions uh, so far as to kind of predict the rise of WCW. And then we've had terrifyingly wrong predictions, such as WrestleMania 14's main event taking place in the International Space Station. <laughs> Last week, we learned about how Hulk Hogan was going to join the Four Horsemen. That's a lot of fun. <laughs> And this week, we're going to learn about Chris Von Eric. Chris Von Eric, for years hindered by his size, will finally experience a long awaited growth spurt in 1993. In 1995, <laughs> he will have developed into a six foot four, 280 pound muscle man with strength and abilities far beyond his brother. Kerry Von Eric. With Kerry as his manager, Chris will win the world class heavyweight title in early 1996, and the crowd at the 1997 Parade of Champions will top the 50,000 mark as Chris Mania overtakes Texas. Is that the greatest hmm. sports almanac? That's exactly right. And not not even slightly accurate, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> no, not this time. <laughs> uh, next up, bored with her duties as Randy Savage's manager, Elizabeth will, in 1994, announce her intention to become an active wrestler. With Randy Savage as her trainer, Elizabeth will mold herself into a top-flight grappler and, without having had one official match, brashly challenge Wendy, Wendy Richter for the WWF World Women's Title in March 1995. In a thrilling 36-minute encounter, Jeez. Elizabeth will pin Richter with a sunset flip. Celebrating the victory, she'll carry the Macho Man on her shoulders. Wow. Did she- <laughs> the- Inaccurate, but Jesus, I wish we could have seen that. <laughs> I want to know how they got 36-minute match. That's right? <laughs> really, really accurate. That's really accurate. So specific. <laughs> did, did, did the Hulk Hogan even ever do a 36 minute match? That's not. No, that that went away. That went away in the Hulk 80s. Or, the only time Hogan's done a 36 minute match is if he was in a Royal Rumble. Maybe. <laughs> no, not even close. No, he was always in the not. top 20. No way. Finally, in what will be remembered as the shocker of the decade. Nick yeah. Bockwinkle will come out of retirement to win the AWA world title for the fifth time in August 1996. The wily veteran will defeat Nick Kinski for the belt in front of 34,000 fans at the Hubert H. Humphrey Metrodome in Minneapolis. Kinski had attacked Bockwinkle during a TV interview on ESPN months earlier, hospitalizing Bockwinkle with back and neck injuries. 
Bockwinkle will attract national attention for his training efforts upon his release from the hospital and will thrill fans around the globe when he takes the belt from Kinski at a 32 minute 11 30, yeah 32 minute 11 second mark of an action packed match. Bockwinkle will go back into retirement to stay following his victory. I feel like this is the point where the guy writing the article was like, oh, I got 200 words to go. All right. You know what? I will, I will give them a modicum of credit for this one. They just had the guy wrong. Bob Backlund came mm-hmm. back and won the WWF title in 95. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, because I think Backlund has the longest, the record for the longest stretch between world title wins. So, they were right about someone coming back. They just weren't right about who it was. True. And a different company. Just, just to, to give everyone some perspective as to what, what all was happening in 1996, you know, during this Nick Kinski, Nick Bockwinkel uh, blowout, The Rock debuted as Flex Kavana in, uh, in 1996. Um, Let's see here. Uh, Jim the Anvil Neidhart showed up in 1996. Uh, his, apparently his gimmick was uh, The Who. Oh, God. No, no, not The Who. Just Who, just, right. Just Who, just Who. Ray Rougeau fought Owen Hart in a boxing match. Uh, and um, Bret Hart wrestled, wrestled internationally during his hiatus. So this would have been the background noise to the, uh, the Nick, Bach, Nick Bockwinkel celebration wait these are things that really happened those things actually happened yes wow wow yeah wow. red heart and Africa. thus concludes predictions. mark henry was the next big thing yeah thus concludes predictions from 1988 yep next year when i go to a comic-con and see a weird thing uh we'll resurrect the segment <laughs> <laughs> and we'll get another five weeks out of it thank you for that <laughs> now we're gonna look ahead from the past that is actually right now, but recorded in the past, because you're probably not joining us live at uh, live.wrestlingmamshow.com. And shame on you for that. But uh, Payback is this weekend. Want to get your thoughts on it. First of all, four-way title match. We talked about this a little bit last week. What do you guys expect to go out of this? I think uh, Mr. Rollins just kind of uh, squeaks by once again. This is just noise for him to uh, build his uh, uh, near-miss title win uh situation i agree i think seth is going to walk out the champion although and uh uh, much as i hate to admit this i really kind of hope that uh dean ambrose kind of pulls it off just for something different right just for something random and weird what do you think mike uh i know what i i know what i'd like to see it's completely unrealistic it'll never happen I'd like for Seth Rollins to get overly frustrated with the authority and for Rollins, Ambrose, and Reigns to just turn on Randy Orton and reunite the shield with Rollins as the head, and then you can have Dean and Roman go for the tag team championships. That's me. That's not going to happen. Rollins is going to win. Kane is going to help him. Then we're going to get Rollins versus Kane in Elimination Chamber. whoop de doo I swear, if that's what we get... <laughs> Because <laughs> that will sad be- thing is, I agree with Mike. Uh, I think that's exactly what's going to happen. No variation whatsoever. Maybe add those guys into the elimination chamber, and maybe throw in mm, Triple H. Oh, let's say Mo. <laughs> Wait, like Men on the Mission, Mo? No, like the Simpsons. Oh, okay. Oh, what about you, Dan yeah. Hooven? What do you think about this main event? I, I actually like Fatal 4 Ways because you can accomplish a lot of storytelling. I, I would like to see Ambrose uh, walk out. It's not going to happen. I love Dean Ambrose. I think he's probably – he carried Rollins on his back for like two months when Rollins was out and everything. I think Rollins retains. I think actually we see the start of a storyline between Reigns and Ambrose uh, with Ambrose t- maybe you know taking the, the heel turn um, and Randy Orton just kind of waiting around till Elimination Chamber. But – be nice if we see all some uh, John Moxley come out at some point during this. So Reigns and Ambrose get in a fight. Somehow cost Randy Orton. Rollins walks out with the title. 
There you go. There you go. Also on this, of course, we got the I Quit match between Rusev and uh, Rusev and uh, John Cena. Do we see? Do we see uh, Lana this weekend? Because it is opening weekend for Pitch Perfect too. Oh, she's gonna be there. She's gonna be there. You think? Okay. She, she's, she's gonna, gonna sing Rusev's theme song. Yeah, she's in it. She's gonna Rusev's theme song. She's gonna sing it. Acapella. Do we end this? John Cena rolls. LOL. Of course. Yep. No other Don't way. Don't be ridiculous. Sorry. The only the only way that this that it might not go that way is if like uh, Rusev gets desperate and threatens to beat up Lana, and Cena, being the chivalrous guy he is, quits so it doesn't happen, and then we get CJ Perry coming out in summer. <laughs> I. Uh... I, I, I actually, I, I think the greatest I quit that match ever was when it was The Rock and Mankind and they piped in his voice over the PA system. He's like, I quit. Um, I, I actually can see, I mean, John Cena's going to win. I think we all know that. I can see Lana quitting for Rusev at some point, saying I quit or something with, like you said, something with Lana involved in it. But Cena retains. I actually really like his weekly challenges, so I hope he keeps it going for a while. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Go, go, really good showings for NXT guys between Zayn and Neville. He's given a lot, it's been, it's too. It's been great. It's been great. I, but both those guys, point out, both those guys t- had to take a, at least one, kicked out of at least one double A. That's, that's crazy. crazy. That's crazy. You you. That's what you use to put away the big guys and your up-and-comer is half his size. Like, you know, we're talking about size. You know, kicked out of the double A. I, I was joking on Twitter that um, in NXT, they teach you how to kick out of the first double A. <laughs> <laughs> But or then I, you can't just flip out of it completely. Yeah, exactly. That and how about Neville hitting the red arrow on scene? That mm-hmm. ending was great. It protected because pretty much p- fans can walk away saying Neville should have won that match, and that Rusev is afraid of Neville. That's why he interfered because he wanted to fight Cena. That booking on that was great. It, mm-hmm. it, if Cena mm-hmm. keeps the belt, who beats him? Who do you see oh. doing it? Because would they do it clean to somebody like a Neville, Zane, uh, you know, maybe Ambrose? I guess, you know, or... or I, I don't I, think it would be clean, but it would be... I think it would be nice to see Zane go over. I think yeah. He, I yeah. think Zane can use that credibility right off the bat because Zane is a very great wrestler. I think Neville sticks out without a title. I think you, you put the U.S. title on Zane in a very sportsmanlike contest with his handshake at the end. It's big. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think mm-hmm. some heel is going to call Cena the title. That's just my five cents. O- Owens just follows him. <laughs> it's just these to continue. No, 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 no. I think it's just basically like like the whole Owens Zane thing is continued storyline of what ended at Ladder War a couple of years ago. It's <laughs> it's just continuing, and he just follows them. Zane gets up. Zane gets updated to the main roster. Owens follows him and and and, and ruins his day. You know, uh, you know, and it keeps going. It keeps going for the IC belt, the US belt. You know, until uh, WrestleMania 34. In the main event, we get Zayn and Owens. I think they give Owens uh, the main from, event. From I, Matt in the chat room, he says Rusev, Rusev threatens to kill Lana. Cena says he quits, and then Lana turns on Cena. Swerveski. Ooh, <laughs> yeah, I can see that. I can see that, especially the way they're playing her up, and then she just completely heals out on it. That'd be good. Mm. That'd be real good. Yeah. That'd be a lot of fun. So, uh, moving on, we got a two out of three falls match between the New Day and Kid and Cesaro. I think we're going to see free bird rules, and they switch out who's wrestling at each fall for the New Day. I, I think, thought the same thing. I think we're going to see a disputed finish. I think uh, at some point Woods and Kofi are going to switch in and out. One of them is going to get pinned, and they're going to say, "No, no, no! I wasn't in the match." Mm-hmm. Because that's what they did with Heart Foundation and Demolition. Uh, Ooh, wow, ago. there's a callback. Was that back when they had the leather masks? Wow. I want to say that was at SummerSlam. Wow. I want to say that was at SummerSlam. Hey, you can check that out on the WWE Network. Just nine ninety nine. By the way, how cool was Pedro's uh, Demolition shirt he was wearing Saturday night? Oh, I didn't see it. You didn't catch that one? It was before he got gussied up for ring announcing. Pedro's so sexy. <laughs> I love Pedro. <laughs> Pedro, we, he will be missed. He's not dying, guys. He's just leaving wrestling, okay? <laughs> but It is like dying to uh, sword. Shut up. It is. It's not like we'll see him again. He lives in Cleveland. So, yeah. Anyways, uh, also, yay, Ziggler, Sheamus. I don't have a fun wait, match. Wait, 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 what, wait, 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 wait. What? Oh, did you have something? Did I miss you? Yes. Yeah, tag match. What about the tag match? 
I, I have had, I've been thinking about something that it, it might be a little controversial. I know a lot of people on the show are going to disagree with me on this. I think New Day is going to win. And the reason New Day is going to win is because uh, Kid and Cesaro, while incredibly talented in-ring performers, are dull as shit when it comes to characters. <laughs> I just don't care about these guys, their motivations, none of it. Well, also, they're not really good because their motivations have completely changed in the last month. Yeah, I, just, I don't I don't care. I, I, I mean, I love watching them wrestle, and I hope they continue to do so. But Jesus, give me a reason to give even a little shit about these guys. Well, don't you watch Total Divas? Mean... Oh, sorry, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> oh, I'm done. Well, I was, was going to say, you mean this wasn't a Beats commercial that I've been watching <laughs> the past <laughs> two months? I want to know if oh, they're getting geez. paid for that. They got to be getting paid for that, right? Right? What? They got to be getting paid for that. I hope so. I doubt, I doubt it, though. I would hope. Anyways. I mean, Breeze has been using an iPhone for his selfie cam, so. But they're covering it up now, that is. So. Um, what's next? Uh, the, yeah, Ziggler, Ziggler, Seamus. It'll happen. It will enjoy it or not. Whatever. Um, Ziggler, uh, Seamus will be the newest member of Cobra Kai. What? <laughs> Look at Ziggler. He looks like he's dressed as a member of Cobra Kai. It's going very in 80s. Street, that's true. Street clothes. That's true. <laughs> like sure. he's Seamus is going to go for a bro kick and Ziggler's going to sweep the leg. Okay. Put have... him in a body bag. Thank you, Wheels. Jeez. You know, it's, it's funny with Seamus. He's he's living the gimmick that I should love. The whole big guy beats up little guy. I can't stand Seamus. He he is one of the guys I think should get a future endeavor. Ginger Cena, upside down what? Rowan. No. Whatever you want to call no, him. No, no. He'd have to do a lot he, to get booted. He has no character direction. He's an obnoxious Irish guy with red hair. It's like it's like a Ginger Cena. He looks like Eric Rowan turned upside down. What? And he comes out with a mohawk <laughs> and is supposed to be a tough guy now. He's going to go over. He's going to win. But ever since he debuted in, in the sci-fi ECW, I never understood what was so great about him. You know, you know, I, I've been fine with the new look and everything and the new attitude until he came out dressed like he was before. And he and like, he, and, really kind of loses it for me. He and, came and, out dressed up like Sami Zayn. And then he does yeah, he the did. whole Are You Entertained gimmick. Like, he says, Are You Entertained? Fell. I, I don't find him intimidating. He, they, he should be... He will always have a job somehow. But I... He is the blandest wrestler on that entire roster. I'd rather watch the Lucha Dragons than him. Oof. Uh, Ooh. The Lucha Dragons are awesome. They use trampolines. For their, for to their get entrance. in the ring. <laughs> yeah. It's not like this is the Spirit Squad over again. Hey, 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 hey. How, how can you not enjoy Kalista? I just, I can't, can't do the Luchas. I do, IWC oh. alumni, oh, Kalista. I feel so sad for you. You don't know joy in your life. That's okay. Man. Jesus. <laughs> wow. What is happening? Are we having an intervention for Dan? Happening? What's next, Sorg? What's, what's, what's next on the card? Shut up. What's next on the card? We got uh, King Barrett Neville. It'll be an amazing match. I love what's going on here. I hope they do a little bit more with uh, Barrett as King, though. I didn't know they were wrestling. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. I love both of mm-hmm. them. It's going to be a good match. I feel bad for Bad News Barrett. He always gets injured at the worst times. But, he does. He does. You know, but I hope... I. I I, I, bad news Barrett has to win that. I mean, they eventually they have to give Neville some sort of win, but Barrett's going to win that. I think he has the King gimmick. That's awesome. Great. Right. Anybody else? I agree. Um, I, I, I agree with Daniel. I mean, I feel bad for the whole Barrett getting injured so much, but it's kind of like, we'll get into it later in the show, but it's like, I swear every good wrestler seems to get injured in WWE so easily compared to what they did probably before they got to WWE. Right. So it's like, what in the world is so different that they're getting injured more in a bigger company than they did in their smaller companies? Could be the ring. So. Could be the the schedule. The schedule. Schedule. Could be a lot of those things. I'm still. I still say, you know, seasons for wrestlers to, uh, taking three months off. After nine or something like that, you know, yeah, and like, I, I, doing, I, um, I think any of these guys need a break. And I think that I think this is catching up with too many of them. And I, I they never will. They never will until they're put up against the wall. You know, um, I, I forget what discussion this was that, you know, they will not. The reason that they're good, so good with drug policy is because they've been made to have to. 
right? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they wouldn't have even bothered. So, I don't know. That's my thoughts there. Uh, Anything else on this match before I move on to the kickoff, which I think we might be excited about? Um, I I mean, I think... Neville got a strong enough push on Monday with mm-hmm. his match with Cena that he could lose Barrett and not really, not really lose any steam for it. Certainly, it doesn't have to be clean. No, oh, it probably won't be. Nope. Does Barrett have a scepter Barrett. he can use? He does actually. It's right in the picture. <laughs> um, also, the kickoff show it maybe answers some of our questions here. Uh, we got Ascension against the team of Axel and Mandel. Oh, we're really calling them Mandel. Wait, no, the he is Mandel. The Macho Mandel. Macho Mandel. Yeah. Oh, that well, we, that is his name. I'm so used to Mizdal for so long, I, I forgot what his real name was. Sandal, that's right. So this is not, I'm confused. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Hopefully this kickoff show will, will, will train some things out for me. So, thoughts? We already talked about this. I, I hope Sandow can do a good flying elbow drop. That's still <laughs> the thing I'm worried about. There you go. There you go. Mega power for go over. It's a pre-show. You send everybody home happy. Send everybody into the show happy. Good guy always wins. <laughs> send everyone home happy. <laughs> the person who leaves after the pre-show is my personal hero. <laughs> <laughs> See the ascension. That's all I came for. Peace. The ascension. The ascension. This is BS. I'm canceling. <laughs> I paid my 80 bucks to see the ascension live and in person job to a macho man gimmick. I'm done. I'm done. They, they cannot improve on this show for me at all. All right, let us know your thoughts on Payback on the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook group or Twitter at Mayhem Show. And, uh, and, and we'll look for the live tweets this Sunday. We'll be having fun. We'll have some parties here around the area uh, watching the show as well. And Elimination Chamber, I guess, in a couple weeks too, right, guys? So that that that's fun. So um, so we'll probably that touch... Be fun if they have a tag team title match in the chamber, though. Oh, that would be great. That's, that's the heavy fit, rumor. You got to fit two guys in each pod. Where's no, I, I you say you have them? three teams. Hmm. You got Kid and Cesaro, New Day, and the Wyatt family. I can see them experimenting Ooh. with that. I, I like, that I get, I like cool. the idea of having two guys in each pod, and somebody is in a pod with Big E, and it's just cramped. <laughs> 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 it's just Kofi bitching the whole time. <laughs> All right, on that Before note. Kofi's like hanging from the top like, God damn, man, I can't even fit in here. <laughs> <laughs> He's just sitting on his shoulders the whole time. Um <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to our friends supporting Pittsburgh Podcasting with great pizza at SliceOnBroadway.com. Check it out there right here along the tracks in Beachview. Other mm. location on Main Street in, Pit- in Car- Carnegie, PA. Great friends of ours. Fresh ingredients. If you're in Pittsburgh, go check them out. Let them know you heard about them on the Wrestling Mayhem Show. And thank you everybody who has been letting them know. Uh, we're talking with uh, the man himself right there on the front page, Rico, uh, saying, yeah, people have been coming in, saying they've been hearing it on the show, been checking it out. And it's really good that you guys are supporting them and uh by by proxy uh supporting the show you know showing what great things we're doing with slice on broadway and we're hoping to do some really awesome things with some other uh other, other great great deals that uh we really hope to uh, share with you here in the future as well so go check them out slice on broadway.com follow them on the twitters the facebooks and the instagrams and you'll get hungry too and maybe you can join us uh for some get that pizza at home and it's it's, it's a podcast pizza day here every Tuesday, right? Right, Wheels. So yes, it is. And and if you can't get out there, maybe if you're nice to Sorg, he'll bring you a slice like he brought me one time. Even if you're not getting a slice on Broadway, you're not in the area. You know, much like we support indie wrestling on the other show, support your local pizza establishment. I put, do, mm-hmm. Sorg. Put down that app. Don't get that Pizza Hut. Leave that hut alone, okay? By the way, yeah. if you happen to be in Poughkeepsie, New York, TJ's Pizza. There you go. There you go. We will turn this into a national campaign to support your independent pizza uh, <laughs> uh, establishment. And ours is Slice on Broadway in this area. So on that note, we'll be right back with the big question. Yo, it's your boy Facade, the suburban terrorist. And you're listening to the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Hey guys, it is the second half of the show. That means it's the time for that biggest of question, or as Dan Hooven would like to say, the Ryback size question for the evening. So uh, with us, with that biggest of all questions, is Mr. Papa Lunchbox. What do you got for me today? Hello, everybody. This week, something very sad happened on Raw. Uh, we It's something that, unfortunately, we've seen a number of times in professional wrestling, and that is... Um, uh, a wrestler came out and they relinquished the title. Um, 
because they were unable to defend it due to a legitimate ongoing injury um, that they were unable to recover from. This uh, this time it was Daniel Bryan. And uh, uh, I saw a post that had a lot of parallels between Daniel Bryan and Edge, but when Edge came out and made a similar announcement, he was ending his career uh, at a very young age. Daniel Bryan left it a bit more open-ended. He said, I might not be able to wrestle again, but I'm going to have this surgery and we'll see what happens. This is uh, familiar territory for Daniel Bryan. He did this before, uh, only before it was with the WWE title and not the Intercontinental title. My question this week is, when is enough enough? At what point do they stop pushing him and stop putting him in the main event because he is so injury prone. Uh, When he's, when does he become uh, a liability, a liability instead of an asset? I think he'll always be an asset, even if he's just in a uh, non wrestling capacity, but I, I hope, you know, I can't speak for him, but if I was in that position, he has a WrestleMania 30 moment. He he's achieved so much. Uh, I hope that he, regardless of whether or not the surgery is considered successful, he hangs it up. I don't think they'll, I, they can't, you know, as sad as it is, they can't trust him in, in a major program because he's so injury prone. So I think this might be the uh, end of Daniel Bryan as an in ring performer. Um, maybe he moved on the train. That's, uh, you know, train, and he can still mix it up a little bit like William Regal, but I, I don't think they can trust him anymore in, in the shows, which is a, uh, just a travesty for everybody involved. I'm concerned that he came back too soon. I think somebody else may have brought that point up here before or something like that. But yeah, yeah, I do feel like uh, he came back too soon and that's part of it. And that's part of the problem. It's part, but it's part of his drive too. And I've been discussing on uh, Mayhem Minute, maybe, you know, maybe we don't see him anymore. And it's a shame because this is the, the, the problem with taking 10 years to get to the WWE is you have 10 years of ring wear on you. Right. And maybe not the safest ring wear. Right. In comparison to what they train you to do in WWE to hopefully protect yourself and be on that schedule uh, a little bit more. I mean, he's obviously modified his style a little bit over the last few years, even before the injuries, you know, to what what's going on in WWE. Uh, but uh, it, it was interesting because I, I put that video up and put it around and I was actually conversing with one uh, fan where she didn't know that he had this big long career beforehand. I want to recommend some Ring of Honor best of DVDs to her. Um, <laughs> but uh, but no, but it, it, again, you know, the fans think like, oh, this is some upstart kid that we heard about for the first time in NXT when they did that thing, right? And uh, no, that's not the case, you know, and he had been around since what, 2002 maybe, LB? Uh, that sounds about right. Mm-hmm. Oh, you're my Ring of Honor guy, so uh, <laughs> oh, so I defer to you. But anyways, <laughs> there uh, was a time. There I, was a time. I mean, you know, Samoa Joe is supposedly in talks with coming to NXT. Oh God, he's been around for so long. It doesn't really matter anymore. And is he even going to be half as exciting as Samoa Joe as he would have been if he was there five, eight years ago? Right. Are they really that's bringing like, him in? That's, that's the word. That's oh, like them yeah. trying to bring in AJ Styles now. Mm-hmm. You know, you guys, you missed the boat. Yeah, what asset would he be at this point? I mean, he would be. You know what I mean? And and to be to be fair, he had a, I still think a mind melting match with uh, uh, Matt Seidel on uh, ROH TV uh, from what we saw in person here at Wheeling, West Virginia, uh, uh, wow, six months ago, something like that. He can still go, you know, and it mm-hmm. means more than flippy stuff he did ten years ago. So. That's my take. Who's next? Uh, well, I mean, I think Brian can be an asset, but I think he needs just legitimate time off. Mm-hmm. Like, I think he needs a solid year away from everything. Like, a solid year, year and a half. I mean, look at Shawn Michaels. Those guys are, in, are have been so much in comparison with their careers over time. Shawn took four years off came back and had some of the best matches of his career. Maybe like, Daniel just lost his smile. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> lost his flippy smile. Well, I, I mean, I mean, seriously, like I think because they don't know exactly what's wrong with Ryan. That's why he wasn't saying that his career is done. He mm-hmm. doesn't know like the interview he had with Jericho. He legitimately doesn't know 
how like what the real fix is. So maybe he takes time off. Maybe he does a little bit of tough enough here and there, but then we don't see him for a while. And like legitimately, because the last time he was off, they would bring him in for random appearances here and there. Don't just let him recuperate, let him recover. But sometimes that's the worst thing, too, is just sitting at home. And at least he's doing something, you know, he's not in the ring, which is what he wants to do. But and plus, he's not losing his value while he's sitting at home. Yeah, I think I think that's still smart, as long as it's not jeopardizing any of his recuperation you know it doesn't mean like sitting in bed the entire time right and i think something like tough enough is going to be a really good thing for him so uh wheels how about you i was just gonna say um honestly i think what he needs to do and i hearken it back to triple h's quad thing he took nine months off with no tv nothing like that just leave him like gone for so long that even the crowd would appreciate him coming back and stuff like that even with just everything's going on in the ring or something's happening and all of a sudden you hit that music and that crowd would erupt let him just even have breathe don't even talk about him don't even say anything just let her career go on her way with everything and yes they are married but just keep it on the like on in the back of the everybody's mind just let everything happen like you said you're, you're making it sound yes. like they're professionally breaking up no not like breaking up i mean why i mean okay ask her questions but have mm-hmm. her just go hey I don't know what's going on. Mm-hmm. Well, they're we'll not. see what happens. They're not with the WWE for much longer. The Bellas are, they're not renewing their contract. Oh, they're not. I saw that on Total uh, Divas, so it has to be true. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, no, that's the. Yeah, the I, I, I kind of call that into question. I think they're going Well, to hey, they're almost up on their Diva shelf life. It's been, what, like five years? Uh, <laughs> Eamon joins us from Corp. No, no, no. Corpus Christi is where he will not be at Elimination Chamber in his hometown because he'll be busy, busy <laughs> with Inspire Pro Wrestling, which if you're in Austin, you can just watch it on demand later. You don't need to watch Elimination Chamber uh, live because they got cool stuff in Inspire Pro Wrestling that's way better than whatever WWE's putting on. Support indie wrestling. Eamon, what's your thoughts on this? Thank you, Stor. Uh, so, I don't, so I don't have to explain and get angry again. Um, I... I <laughs> The, the whole concept of him being a valuable player, I think, is in question. Uh, I, I look at somebody like like Stone Cold Steve Austin, and he took about like 10 months off or so in, in that period between 99 and 2000 to help recuperate his neck. And he came back, and he came back strong, and he was still a big-time player, but his career only went for another couple of years after that. Um, I think he could be used, if, if Brian were to take, a larger stint time off, um, I think he could be used to a greater to a to just as big of a capacity as before. But there is still a shelf life, and there is still you know a case of he may just you know his time in in professional wrestling may but probably will be running short because he's been doing it for close to fifteen years at this point. Um, I, I think that. It's a difficult situation. I do think you have to, as a wrestling fan, sometimes detach yourself and say, go go from being like, oh, I'm not going to get to see him wrestle, you know, for however long, and go, no, I, I'm I'm concerned about your health. You know, take right. the time off. Right. Um, and and sometimes that's hard to do. Also with us is Bobby F. J. Town, Daniel Hooven. I will not look at whatever picture you just sent me. <laughs> It's normal. It's, it's just <laughs> no, no. It's not going. Maybe for you, I know what how your pictures get. You're you're in the Jimmy DeMarco school of picture sending. <laughs> Anyways, uh, was that Dick last one Regis Filmin? Dick Clark, I think. Dick Clark. That's still. That's just as this, disturbing. This one is 100 percent wrestling things. related. Oh, happy, I, don't happy even, new year. I so should I even look? I uh, it's the only retirement speech that matters. Uh, uh okay okay that's okay that's that's mark henry and not doing anything weird 
but wearing salmon. Bobby FJ Town from FJ Town. Um, what are your thoughts? Um, I'm thinking when they announced him as a tough enough pa- panelist, I'm like, ah, oh, this is probably his thing going forward. I bet. Um, it's it's kind of sad. I, I I like you guys. I hope he he comes back. You know. Um, I just it's sad, but. <laughs> Shawn Michaels come back after they thought his career was over. So, I mean, you anybody never can come back. He just needs to get that yoga going in, right? Yeah. DDP yeah. yoga. It's DDP yoga. Where's the, I, I, I'm still waiting for that fitness show with DDP. On a side note with D, with uh, yoga, I wanted to start a yoga hot dog business called Downward Dogs. If anybody wants to go in with me on a Kickstarter. There's actually <laughs> a sign on 51 on the way to IWC and RWA um, that's hot dog yoga. Nice. <laughs> they beat so. me to it though All right. yeah but I like your name better Riz is with us uh, please check out Riz Plays Games on insertcointobegin.com the wonderful new uh, Let's Play series that's happening over there uh, Riz what are your thoughts on the big question and Daniel Bryan um, my, big, my answer to this one is kind of what, you, what all you guys just said uh, but with one little caveat we, we, we say this like WWE has the final say. And they kind of do. But also you have to realize Daniel Bryan for the last, I believe you said, 10 years had, was trying to get into the WWE. And he did the stuff that he has done in the indies, in the WWE. He has dove outside of, of the ring. He has done a whole bunch of shit Mm -hmm. um so and if he stops that how do we know he's not going to want to do that Mm -hmm. what if we what if he somebody goes up to him goes okay we're gonna we're gonna push you out or you're you're not gonna come back so somebody he i don't think he has the the mindset of, okay, I'm just going to sit out for a year or two or three. All he knew was professional wrestling. And in his mind, if he sits down for 10 months, 12, 12 months, maybe even more, he's not going to know what to do. And he's going to try to come back. And it's going to be worse. Uh, I, I know for like from experience from seeing other people in other lines of work try to do something that they're not supposed to do, and it's just wear and tear on the body trying to get back to where they were. And I'm sure very little of those things are the same as you know as throwing yourself yeah. to the mat. I mean, I mean, how many times have we seen Daniel Bryan do the dive mm-hmm. and then land shore first into the barricade yep. and having his neck twist like that do that you, mm, go ahead. do you guys think it was irresponsible of the v um three months after brian came back to put him in a big multi-man ladder match uh again was that his was that their decision well, it's always a toss-up because there's, you know, what's the guy's decision versus will they yeah. really make a decision for themselves over the you, company when the company is like, well, you know, what message are you sending to the company? You know, I don't want to call in sick too many times because I don't want the company to think that I'm unreliable, you know, and yeah. it's the same thing there. You know, you're like, well, I don't want them to think that I'm injury prone. I want them to think that that I'm too cautious to do these things that they want me to do, so I'm going to do it anyways. You don't really say no to a ladder match at WrestleMania, you know? So it, It's, it's kind of, in a weird way, what we said with the whole... Well, look at what CM Punk said in that one podcast, that mm-hmm. how many times he's worked injured or he got the call of, hey, I want you to do this match for me. I'll give you a solid next time. Right. Right, right. I think I think it's just a wrestler mentality. Um, I don't think it's a mentality directed from any particular person uh, in wrestling. It's just a case of wrestlers working through injuries. I think mm-hmm. you know. I'm sure you know. On, on the indies, it's probably just as much prevalent, and it's not even as talked about how injured some of these wrestlers are, and they're working through it. You know, um, 
I think in WWE, we just see more of the injury based stuff because they have a wellness policy. They, they do report on when wrestlers get injured and stuff like that. Um, you know, I, I, I think it's just as much of it. It's, it's just shining a light on what's sort of not being seen you know, in, in, in all of wrestling. Certainly. Uh, Pierre K. Uh, join, uh, uh, tells us his thoughts as well on the emails. Uh, you know, sad uh, about this. Well, he wonders if he's going to end up in the indies uh, on appearance and stuff. No, I think he's got a job for life when it comes to WWE. Unless he wants to. Unless he, uh, unless then, he wants to. Yeah, of course. Night of Superstars 5, we'd be happy to host Daniel Bryan. We would not require him <laughs> to dive into any any walls. Um, but we would welcome him as long as he brought his wife for sacrifice. Whoa. Wait, what? <laughs> I'm sorry, that wasn't supposed to be on there. Oh, okay. All right, tell us your thoughts and uh, uh, hashtag it. Uh, hashtag WMS big question uh, on the tw- box. The What's lunch- up? Did you lunchbox answer? I'm What's sorry. Up? Did I not? I don't think did a lunchbox answer. I, I don't think so. Um, lunchbox, are you okay, right, buddy? Um, yeah. No apologizing. I'm, I'm real good. I'm real good. <laughs> Fucking, I'm sorry, Bobby. Uh, (laughs) yes i think it does reach a certain point where you gotta hang it up you know what i mean you can't trust like like you said you can't trust him to be in a major uh title situation especially if he's gonna win and that's what everybody wants you know what i mean everybody on the internet throws a fit every time you know it's not brian in the main event or brian loses in the main event or whatever and um but if he's going to get injured time and time again, you know, I think I think he still has a lot of life left in him. Honestly, I think if this surgery is successful, he can come back and have another run, have another couple of years. But the fact of the matter is that uh, Daniel Bryan is closer to the end of his career than he is the beginning. And that is a shame because he's a magnificent wrestler. Mm-hmm. He hasn't had but ten, somebody ten, would have to. Oh, go ahead. He doesn't have to, He hasn't had 10 years in the relatively safe WWE ring like like John Cena has. Sorry, mm-hmm. Riz. But does somebody have to pull him aside and go, hey, take it down a notch a little bit. <laughs> like, yeah. try to save yourself. Right. I know, I, like, they, I know he's trying to put on the best performance of his, like, best performance that they he can with the fans around him. Exactly. But sometimes he puts his life on the line way too many times. He needs Bo Dallas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I, I was just gonna I was just gonna say would people sort of back in what the late nineties, early two thousands say the same thing in Mick Foley? No. Because mm-hmm. it was a different era. Yeah. I think they did I, say I, it. No, I think they did say it to him. To be honest. I oh Vince said it to him. I, I do yeah. you do you think? On I, film, he said these things to him. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he says that was great. Don't ever Don't do something ever. like that again. Ever. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. You get one chance at that. We can't stop you while you're live on a pay per view, right? Yeah. Anyway, Amen, Amen, you got to watch that Beyond the Mat document. Oh uh, no, I, I, that's I, I, that's I've the first DVD I ever bought. I, I, that's be- just just for Dennis Stamp. But uh, but, but I think even beyond two, like like from Hell in a Cell on, there's stuff where he was prolonging having surgery and prolonging you know taking time off just because oh well we have you know this big thing coming up oh wrestlemania is coming up oh you know this thing's coming up um you know and he prolonged taking any time off and when he did it was very like a couple weeks is that the same thing we got mad at the bellows and total divas for doing Mm-hmm. bring that yeah. around anyways uh, let us know your thoughts hashtag WMS big question on the Twitter at mayhem show hit us up on that as well and your prize for this week if you participate is uh, the uh, road to super indie the dance that's just being released this week from this past weekend great four away with Tommy Dreamer uh, Tommy Tommy Dreamer Dalton Castle RD City and Justin Labar Things got weird. Sword. Things got weird on Sunday night. Things got real weird. Mm-hmm. It's on YouTube. Everybody's seen the leg video, right? By the, by the way, uh, find Bobby. Your Bobby? Find a Bobby. Find Bobby. Find Bobby in the crowd. Bobby Rizzo. got it in his car. Mm-hmm. I got out my car. Mm-hmm. Got out there. That's right. <laughs> well, hey, at least Tommy Dreamer had a leg up on a competition. On oh, that. Oh. oh. All right, let's roll it around to uh, Mike. You have some things to say. Apparently, uh, Impact Wrestling got really controversial this week. And 
and, and explain what entirely happened. So, so it sounds like uh, from the sounds of it, this is the first episode with Bill Cor- Billy Corgan in it, right? As, uh, as part yeah, of it. this is the first episode of Billy Corgan influence. Um, it's also the TNA's first live impact in a very long time since it, since it launched on probably uh, Destination America, right? Uh, I believe they had one more live show after that, but they they have not had many live shows. Um, yeah, uh, so MVP came out with the Beatdown Clan. And uh, for those of you unfamiliar, the Beatdown Clan uh, is feuding with this faction called The Rising, which is a bastardized version of the Nexus, same color scheme and everything. Wow. And they, they've they been um, like uh, beating each other up and uh, doing hit-and-run attacks, you know, very, very heel stuff. And, um, and MVP came out and said that, People were accusing the Beatdown Clan of being thugs, which a, a faction attacking people backstage with a lead pipe and, and interfering in title matches, you know, all that stuff. And then MVP said that he was going he, before he prefaced this like on live TV saying he was going to be real and uh, say things that were going to make people upset. And he said that the Beatdown Clan being called thugs was just a new way of saying the n-word mm-hmm. and he never didn't it, say it, the n-word which, no he did not say the n-word and you can uh, you don't even have to be that good at reading lips mm-hmm. to see what he said and it did get uh, it did get bleeped on air live it did get bleeped on live so in other words this was totally pre-planned and they absolutely knew it was no coming. not necessarily uh, they sure. there's a guy on a button for all live shows. Yeah, nothing's live anymore. It's all yeah. like like seven second delay or something. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. there's room for that. Ever since we saw Janet Jackson's boob that one time. Even, <laughs> even before that. Even before that. With also, the, what, the, I, the, I don't know. What, I don't know what the big deal is. JBL almost says it like five times every time a Dolph Ziggler match happens. That's true <laughs> too. That is true too. From but, to Michael. But this is, I mean, this is something, you know, we, there were stories, we were talking about it. I, I know there's a story I brought up on Mayhem Minute here uh, within the last week or so where, you know, Billy Corgan was on Fox News of all places talking about how he was, he wanted to find inventive ways to bring in transgendered and racial issues to TNA wrestling uh, and that they, they could tell those stories in interesting ways. I don't know if this is a direct influence of that, but it has to be. It's, right? a, it's, a it's, reference, be. it's a reference to what somebody said on CNN mm-hmm. because <laughs> one pundit was referring to them as thugs and somebody said essentially exactly what MVP Right, said. right. This, yeah. this, is, this is an ongoing conversation yeah. happening now because of the Baltimore situation. I don't want to get into that discussion per, per se, but how do we feel with this discussion happening in our pro wrestling? We talked about realness versus uh, uh, midget bull characters in the past. You know, uh, but you know, is is there a place for this? Is are they and, and are they doing it in the right way? What 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 right? What what qualifies Billy Corgan the book of pro wrestling show other than the fact that he's a famous singer? Well, actually, he he had he's resistance been pro for wrestling for yeah. like a decade. Um, yeah. Well, and, and and on top of that, you, you go to wrestling to relax and enter. I don't go to wrestling to, to watch, you know, uh, metaphors for 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 the riots and the, you know, it's not like I don't want to go to a wrestling show, especially if I'm with my kids and have them exposed to that. I I don't I think TNA needs to go back to doing what they did right and showcase a unique brand of wrestling, uh, find their brand rather than try to be crash reality TV. I mean, having a work shoot. I mean, let's go back to Nitro before it died and everybody was being real with quotation marks, (laughs) you know. So it's it's a fine line for you. You want it to be realistic, but not too realistic. It doesn't need to. It doesn't. You don't well, need we, to bring well, in controversial no, agree, things. You know. We don't want to. We don't want to be told, "Hey, this is what actually is happening." We don't want you know Tony Giovanni going like, "Oh, Goldberg didn't follow the script last night." No, like, <laughs> like the I I think I think there is a place for racial and transgender and and. Um, uh, gender in general issues uh, to be brought into professional wrestling. I think companies like Lucha Underground are doing that very well. Mm-hmm. Um, I think there's a difference between showcasing those and 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 telling and, 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 and exploiting them and and just haphazardly just being like oh racial stuff. Like it, it didn't serve yeah. the story. It didn't. It, it didn't do anything. Do you know how? Yeah, I mean, it, it just had. MVP going out and just saying the N word 
And by the way, Kenny King's reaction during that, priceless. Yeah. And well, he, by the way, this is also filmed. And angry and wait, 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 wait. What was what was the reaction to that? He was shocked, angry, and slightly concerned. <laughs> You know how TNA could so quadruple character. the ratings easily? Hmm. Give Scott Steiner a live mic for the for the go home yes. fifteen minutes of every week. Yes. And and that that would be that would be how you increase ratings because Scott Steiner, that man is Scott Steiner twenty four seven. Scott Steiner, Iron Sheik debate. When he called Samoa Joe a fat ass, I thought that was the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. I'll I'll just say I'll just say this and and to not to, I'm not going to spoil upcoming TNA uh, events. Um, but when no, it comes like to Billy, when it comes to Billy Corgan's claims about you know bringing light to racial and, and gender and all those other stuff issues, he is completely full of shit and doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about or doing. I'm sorry. Did he, he I, do that with Orlando Jordan? Wasn't he like the? I mean, it's a, it's a shame you take stuff like that. Here's how you do racial and transgender on on wrestling. You have racial. I'll just, I'll just say there's an upcoming knockout segment in a, in a couple of weeks that is just so regressive, and it's. Ugh, I'm tired. I'm tired of TNA. They they are so infuriating to me. <laughs> they are. Really... Just, oh, hey, hey, I just don't watch it. I know. I Actually, also nobody should support Destination this America. Filmed... Wait, wait, what's your, what's your problem with Destination America? They can fuck themselves. That's Whoa. Oh, oh, oh. oh, oh, I forgot about our conversation about this. Yeah, they can fuck themselves. I hope that whole company goes. We did discuss this on Indie Mayhem Show, right? Yeah. Yeah, if you want to know why he's so angry, go find his episode of Indie Mayhem Show. He really gets into it. You do he's not good. mess with Deep Fried Masters, sir. That's, that's a good show. That a Save that. Awesome Save show. the wrestling. But, but their bullshit ghost shows, they need to go. Oh, yeah. Fuckers. Um, I, I, think my, I think my other problem with, like, I mean, be controversial all you want. That's fine, especially if this is the one time until June you're going to have a live program. But you're filming in a theme park where oh. parents bring their children for free. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, now, I know there are probably disclaimers, but at the same time... I would be furious if I was Universal. If I, I was Universal, the and, well, no. If, if you're a parent, yes, but <laughs> Universal too. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if they don't let TNA come back based on oh, like that. No, no, they've done worse. I, they've done much they, worse at that, that place. Really? <laughs> I think I so. Don't, I don't think they have. Oh, no, you the can't drop the end bomb. They can't so. drop the end bomb in public in front of kids. Is that kids. the line? Is yeah. that the line? That's the line. That's the line. Of man, man, this uh, Potter this story. wizarding world of Harry Potter really got blue for my taste to bring the kids back. Seattle. Yeah, I mean, unless <laughs> you're calling someone a muggle, that's really the only one word name. Watch your fucking language. language. <laughs> Watch, we are not that kind of show. show. Nope. Do no, not use that language. Nope. <laughs> Did you just think you're a muggle maggle. Yep, oh, uh, hold on. Wheels, wheels, what do you think? <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right, well, what, are right. your, what are your thoughts okay. on this? For the people that listen to me and us on a weekly basis, we always joke, and I always joke, that some of the comments that come out of my mouth shocks even poor Sorg. But for the listeners, that do not see the video. I am an African American gentleman. What? What? No. You're yes. <laughs> oh yes, I know. It's but, like uh, the audio people responding in, in shock. I mean, come on, guys. I mean, we don't see color here. No, we don't. Exactly. All, all of the hangout fees are in black and white. Yes. I guess that doesn't <laughs> we do help, does it? Not see color. We do not see religion. I'm we do not see how pasty white Bobby is. Whoa. <laughs> And how sexually dark DJLB is. I mean... What? Why do I gotta be pale? Yeah, well, why do you always be pale? Well, I usually pick on Riz, but I figured I'd let my little brother get picked on for once. Bobby, you know I love you. I'm, I'm not okay, Seamus but, Pale. No, you're not, no. He's just ragging but on you because you didn't go to RWA. I'm, I'm page pale. Right? <laughs> yes, you're page pale. And that means you're sexy. But uh, anyways, I figure... With something like this, I mean, I agree. Shock factor. Oh, let's go to a. Sh let's just shock the fans with. Let's use the 
N word. And folks, I'm going to say the N word. Why? Because I can't. Again, what is wrong with this world <laughs> when you got to sit there and go, let's shock the fans with using the N word? <laughs> okay, you want to hear that word? Well, I'm Watch editing. Jango and Chain. <laughs> Well, I'm glad okay. the Sorg is going to be labeled as something bad. This is fun. Well, yeah, then thanks. Now, now I'm going to have to do that. Yeah, great. Uh, sorry, uh, Sorg. <laughs> hold on. I, let I, me I drop a I, marker I'm, over here. I'm up now. That's I, like I said. I gave the disclaimer. Hey, I'm an African American. I said it. But why do we, as a wrestling community, some of us who work in this, Amon, Sorg, Dan. What is, I mean, would you want to go to a show and have to be shocked with that? Or would you rather see wrestling talent and a good promo that doesn't need that kind of shit? I I agree. I think when. It's very lazy. It's lazy. I think when you you resort to using shock language like that or or even sex to an extent, I'm all about Sable showing her tits, but, you know, there's a point (laughs) where you just got to, you know, just do it tastefully and, and use good writing and not shock factor. Yes. I mean, I, I say it all the time. It's like some wrestlers, they want to use it, don't know how to get over the correct way. They used to cheat people by yeah. insulting another the shocker local sports folks. team. Insulting local sports like, team or something like that. Yeah, yeah. It's like they'll pick on a sports team, or I'll use me as an example. Also, I'm also in a wheelchair. No. And I mean, so a heel wrestler goes over, keep it up, and they'll push you down. Flight of stairs. Oh, that's really exciting. Haven't heard that one before. Sorry. So, if sorry, you're not that say. experienced, <laughs> <laughs> not experienced enough to sit there and get yourself over without using myself or an old grandma or, or little, little kids. Whiny, yeah, little kids, then you don't deserve the, my money. Will, okay? you hear that every week. By us, <laughs> yes, but we don't work together. We just yeah, play he, together. He works. He works. He he hears even worse <laughs> I've amongst been there his once. friends. I mean, <laughs> I, I'm, I I get it. Yeah. So I mean, that that sometimes hey, some wrestlers do it just because hey, it's funny and I want to do it. Others do it because oh crap. I don't know what to do to get but, over as but a heel. When they're doing that, they're not making a uh, sociological point. Yeah, no. like, they're, like, they're not making a social statement. They're just trying to elicit a reaction. They're getting, yeah, they're getting cheap heat because you are, uh, you know, a disabled, you know, and, and they're like, well, exactly. you know, hey, who, who? That's an easy way to get booed is to make fun of that guy in the wheelchair, and, right? And and going back to it, so if, taking that into account, what were MVP's intentions with this to get people to boo him? Yeah, well, if anything call, else, to, if anything else, he got all of us talking about him, didn't we? I guess. And probably yeah. the most spirited yeah, talk. It's, it's not good. Yeah, no, it's not it good isn't. What we're saying. It's not like we're saying, oh, that was such a great promo. I'm really excited about what the Beatdown Clan has to do now. We're saying, no, it was fucking <laughs> it. Up, and, we, and he shouldn't no, be, no. He shouldn't <laughs> be That's doing another shit like that again. Yeah. Exactly. And <laughs> I just said, because I had an outburst, and I apologize for that, but it's it's moronic. Mm-hmm. It's moronic yeah. to do something like that because it, unless it serves the storyline, that you're trying to tell. Like, would I have been surprised if Farouk, during the Nation of Domination gimmick, dropped that? No. Because that they were doing a Black Panther thing. They did like, everything but that, right? They did, like, yeah, a Black Panther right. thing, but, like, <laughs> like, the most tasteful Black Panthers representation you probably could have had, right? <laughs> like, like within yeah, the limits they, of TV. They did that perfectly. That showed, hey, we could get over as this well, African-American well, group that is strong, but we don't have to use racial slurs. Plus, to then, do it. then you also had like we came to the point, but we didn't go over it. We got to the point where you know what you want to finish the sentence with because you've seen something like this before. We're making a point, but this, and then you had the Rock saying, well, "I'll be in the group, but I want to make clear it's not a racial thing." Like the like what they're, you're trying to do with these guys, and that added a new dynamic to it, right? Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's and then, basically what we want, what we originally wanted the New Day to be, right? Of them yeah. being a collection of black guys that are like, "Hey, they put us." all these stupid vignettes of us acting like we're racial or like we're you know we're black or whatever and and being like no we're just a collection of wrestlers Mm -hmm. and we're good at what we do if they had D'Lo Brown they'd be over like the nation (laughs) 
<laughs> there we yeah. see D'Lo Brown out there clapping. All right, on that note, guys, let us know. This is, again, another kind of hot topic here uh, this week. Let us know what you think about this. And uh, uh, at Mayhem Show on Twitter, and, of course, uh, we'll have discussions going on, as usual, at Wrestling Mayhem Show on the Facebook group. So let's roll into, uh, we, uh, so we include a little bit of the fan mail in there. Uh, but uh, let's learn what you learned from wrestling this week and you guys can tell us as well day of here on tuesdays and before we do this live at about 9 p.m eastern time or drop us a line to the email and uh, phone number over on wrestling yeah. show no right. we're not doing that yet almost i learned you. i learned about <laughs> the n-word you know, on your show sword. Address, and we immediately said that sword <laughs> you got your train it's like pavlov you rang the bell so we got hungry my mouth's water or <laughs> sliced on broadway uh wheels what'd you learn from wrestling this week I learned that John Cena can pull off a great match no matter what anybody else thinks of him because that was an amazing match last night. I enjoyed watching Cena and Neville. Awesome. Uh, what about you, LB? What would you learn? Um... Eamon, what would you learn from wrestling this week? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I learned from wrestling this week that WWE is always watching. <laughs> he knows how exciting it's getting over crazy. inspired don't ever look at my camera like that again wow, uh, wow. always watching what about you LB <laughs> oh you came back so fast <laughs> <laughs> I thought I had it for them longer <laughs> oh my <laughs> Uh, I, I learned that. Uh, shit. What Bobby, what'd you learn from wrestling this week? <laughs> I learned that, I learned that uh, in, indie wrestling is fun, and if you give somebody an idea, make sure they know who you are first. <laughs> <laughs> you hear that, Justin Plummer? You hear that? LB, what'd you learn from wrestling this week? <laughs> <laughs> I kind of I want to keep doing this and see if you keep coming back to me. <laughs> You're just giving me time to prep for the next person for me to switch to on the other camera. Riz, what'd yeah. you learn from wrestling this week? That's uh, who me? Yes. <laughs> oh, I I learned that um, I am the only one who was excited to see Ray Rowe. What really? What? Like 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 I was the only one who actually like. The guys around us, around Bobby and myself, had no fucking idea who Ray Rowe was. Really? None. Wow. Well, they must have been under a rock. Wow. And I even, like, got up from my seat and yelled Ray Rowe, and nobody knew what the fuck I was talking yeah, about. Yeah, you, you were the only one that yelled that. Yes. <laughs> so you're the one I heard. Yeah. Yes, that was me. Listen to, listen for risk. Uh, but, yeah, that's what I learned, Sorg. All right, uh, Dan. They're gonna they're gonna be in some for a treat next month. Mm -hmm. Dan Hooven, what'd you learn from wrestling this week? The N word. <laughs> <laughs> and that the uh, Vern Gagne of Pittsburgh, the Steel City Saint, the Alpha Male, Justin Plummer, continuously books the best shows in the world at the International Wrestling Cartel. Tickets for the next show, Super Indie, are on sale limited. Wow. At www.iwcwrestling.com. Darren De Niro, you're in the studio. Can you sneak up to the mic and tell us what you learned from wrestling this week? <laughs> when a heavy man gives you a splash in a corner, it kind of hurts. <laughs> <laughs> Just kind of. That's Darren De Niro joining us here in a few minutes here on the Indie Ram Show. Who do I got left? Is there anybody in the chat room? I don't even know. LB's left. LB. Oh, LB, what'd you learn from wrestling this week? It's true. It's true. Wait, did um, everybody else go? Bobby? I haven't gone yet. Mad go ahead, Mike? Man. Go ahead, Mike. What did you learn? <laughs> Mike, what did you learn? <laughs> you I, some more time. I learned that I could watch Cesaro and Biggie Langston wrestle an hour-long match that, and not get tired of it. That was fun. Yeah. I, I do like that. that that's, that's back to like the Cesaro and other people punching each other forever that, that I just enjoyed. And, and the, the, the roll-up he did to a man the size of Biggie. Mm -hmm. That but was impressive. Good. Mm -hmm. That was really good. 
From the uh, Facebook, Alex Carr's learned that Creative still doesn't know what to do with Sammy and da- uh, Damian Sandow. Ooh, yeah. Alex in there, other Alex in there, Alex Campbell learned that Storm suck and my cable went out at 8.08. Didn't get to oh, see it. No. Uh, That's the worst. Matt no. Carlin's learned that John Cena's attitude adjustment never works on the first try. And Garza learned that Taker's streak got broken by Mil Mertes in her inherited his resurrection powers. Huh. <laughs> That's interesting to know. Uh, LB, what'd you learn? I learned that there's no fucking rules, man. What? If you want to be like, hey, let's have a pay-per-view, and then your friends are like, well, we're already having a pay-per-view. Fuck you. Let's have another one. Let's cancel <laughs> all of our shows and just fucking wedge a pay-per-view in there. No fucking rules, man. That's what I learned. That's what happens when your name's on the <laughs> network, right? You know what? Wait, with Sogertron Media, we can just cancel all the podcasts and have another podcast right now. Let's right. have a fucking what? pay-per-view no, right now. I, I really want now I really want them to rename Extreme Rules No Fucking Rules. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. It's their network. They can do whatever they want to. Thank you everybody for joining Thursday us in the middle of June. <laughs> Live that for <laughs> 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 for whenever it's, it's, we it's might have in the afternoon. Whenever right we might have our the afternoon cuz fuck anyone who works. That's, you how, get Japan that, some month that's why I do my morning shows when I do, right? You can join oh, me while man. you're getting into work and just clocking in and just watch my Periscope while I'm recording in the morning, sleepy-eyed. Or did you learn anything? Huh. <laughs> Come back to him. <laughs> Come back <laughs> to him. <laughs> <Come back to, laughs> right. Who learned something else? Oh, did you learn anything else? Um, I that? learned that <laughs> even when Aiden Vale has his creepy Dead Wrestling Society face paint on, he still uh, he still talks. On. He's still in his little T-shirt on. He still <laughs> talks like Aiden Vale, and that's even creepier. So uh, <laughs> with that. <laughs> Why does he wear the rocker T-shirt with the with the evil gimmick? He needs to get a new T-shirt. No, I think the whole idea is the face paint, and they just kind of found him. He's been wearing the same clothes since you last saw him. I several like him months a lot. I, mean, I, mean, I like him. I just, I just yeah, I like the T-shirt. Oh. I think you know that's what I'm getting. I liked when they started using him as a weapon. Yeah, I'm gonna start wearing. I'm gonna start wearing face paint when my girlfriend's bad. Maybe that will scare her a little bit. I forget who was saying about how John was it. You was saying how John Bullen's scary enough by himself, and now he walks around with the scary face paint, and it's Who's even that? worse. Mm-hmm. Oh, Bullen. Yeah. Hey, that's another guy I want to fuck with in an alley. <laughs> <laughs> that serious face Dan had. <laughs> like, oh, okay. Uh, if you want to know, uh, let us know who you wouldn't fuck with in an alley. Uh, you can drop a line at 412-206-WMS0 or the email address at Good times. Good times at WrestlingMamShow.com, live.wrestlingmamshow.com at uh, 9 p.m. Eastern Time, followed promptly by the Indie Mayhem Show. Tonight's guest, Darren De Niro of IWC and Five Star Pro Wrestling. I got that right, right? Yeah. 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 Five Star Army, baby. He's Five Star Army, baby. Just got a TV deal down in West Virginia. Um, anyways, <laughs> uh, what, what are the other things I say? Uh, Twitter, Facebook, Google+, all the places. The Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook group is a great place for you to converse with us and other people. I don't even know over there. I'm glad you're all part of the family. Uh, oh. Please subscribe to us on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, YouTube, Daily Motion of all places, and uh, so much more. Please share it, friend it, share it with all your friends if you're enjoying the Ram shows. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, thanks to, oh, I forgot to plug them all night. Mike Allen at Mike Allen PR doing the show notes all night long on the other po- podcast I didn't plug them on. I forgot he was back this week. Um, but thank you so much, everybody. We'll see you guys next time. Thanks to our guest, Daniel Hooven at Daniel Hooven on the Twitters. Uh, mayhem out. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.